This is the Citizen Link Report. If you find our insights helpful, would you support our video efforts? Your gift of $25 or more goes a long ways. Covers the crew, lights, cameras, all that. Just click on Donate. Thanks from all of us. The second term is underway. We'll consider the president's plans and what's down the road. This is the Citizen Link Report. Hi, I'm Stuart Shepard, along with our executive director, Tom Minery. Hi, Tom. Hello, Stuart. First, just your overall impression of the inaugural address. Fasten your seatbelts. Uh, term two, President Obama is uh, embracing the liberal agenda, much of which he failed to get passed in the first term. But as one of the commentators yesterday said, Obama unbounded. And he has uh, brought up issues that we've not heard about in a long time, one of them being a global warming. My goodness, moving forward, that issue with the Republican Congress is difficult because when he first took office 2009, he had a Democrat House, a Democrat Senate, and he still could not get anything done on global warming. And in spite of the fact that, that last year was a, a somewhat warm year compared to the last 34 years of records, it was like the ninth out of 34 globally, uh, overall global warming has just been flat for more than a decade, and that's creating problems for those who predicted catastrophe starting about now. Which is why they changed the term to climate change. <laughs> one of the reasons. Hey, I want to show you a couple of things he said during his speech and get your reaction to them. The first one, he talks about something that we often say he ignores, and that is the founding fathers and the founding fathers documents. We have always understood that when times change, so must we. That fidelity to our founding principles requires new responses to new challenges. That preserving our individual freedoms ultimately requires collective action. Tom, what's that all about? Oh, all what that's about is big government. That is a euphemism. That word Collective action is a euphemism for let government do it, which has been his theme during the first term. And as I said, I think he's going to emphasize that in his second term. So the opposition party has its work cut out for it, that's for sure. All right, and, and it kind of has a hint of a certain style of government in that word collective. Well, it does. The old uh, reminiscence is to a collectivist, which um, is what we used to talk about when we studied communism. Not saying that we're a communist government here. I'm just saying that word collective is not normally used in uh, our democracy today. And, and it certainly carries at the very least the idea of transferring wealth from those who've acquired it to those who have not. Yes, and other aspects of his uh, speech uh, present that as well. Several times in the speech he talked about the uh, lucky few as opposed to the greater good for all that were uh, those who have uh, gotten rich so to speak uh, tend to be lucky. Uh, he used the word lucky that was reminiscence of uh, Vice President Al Gore who said those who have done well have been lucky in life's lottery as if that's all it takes. So a little bit frustrating there. Yeah, as opposed to hard work, yeah. effort, initiative, creative ideas. That's right. All those things get left, uh, get left to the side. He also, uh, here in this next clip, he talks about how the nation, as, as he sees it, is moving forward and expresses it in a way we've not heard before. We, the people, declare today that the most evident of truths, that all of us are created equal is the star that guides us still. Just as it guided our forebears through Seneca Falls and Selma and Stonewall, just as it guided all those men and women, sung and unsung, who left footprints along this great mall, to hear a preacher say that we cannot walk alone, to hear a king proclaim that our individual freedom is inextricably bound to the freedom of every soul on earth. So that's a good alliteration, but let's walk through it. First, Seneca Falls. Uh, Seneca Falls refers to a convention back in 1848 in upstate New York in which a number of women, church women, decided to push for a women's right to vote. Now here's an irony. That whole movement grew up out of the same preaching from uh, Charles Finney that in, in, enraged people about the issue of abolition. Charles Finney, a conservative evangelical preacher, his issue was social justice on a lot of fronts. And uh, this movement was influenced by that. Now, the next one we all know, I think, and that's Selma. 
Oh, that's right. Sama refers to the, one of the um, best known events of the civil rights uh, fight. And um, here again, I, I, I find an uh, irony. A lot of the people who marched in the civil rights movement uh, marched from churches. Obviously, uh, Martin Luther King was a, a minister, and uh, the uh, civil rights movement and the suffrage movement had a lot of um, church background in it. The uh, Seneca Falls Convention was held at a Methodist church. Uh, and uh, here, uh, Susan B. Anthony, who came along a little bit later in that movement, uh, was arrested for voting, and she let it be known that she voted straight Republican. Back then, the party of reform was the Republican Party because it stood against slavery. All right. And finally, one that means a lot to gay activists, but maybe not to most people, and that's Stonewall. Tell us about the Stonewall riots. It refers to a riot that took place in New York City about back in the 60s when um, gay people thought that the police had gone too far in provoking them, harassing them, and they rioted. And that is generally believed to be the start of the gay rights movement. Okay, so that's what the three are. Is there a direct line from women's suffrage to the civil rights movement of the 60s to gay activism today? Well, I, and, and not one that uh, goes through biblical truth, obviously, because uh, when we think of, uh, when focus on the family, citizen link thinks of uh, the gay rights movement, we think of the challenges to marriage. And we didn't write the definition of marriage. God did that in the Bible, and so we can't see a, a connection there. Obviously, the civil rights movement and the suffrage movement have brought the uh, uh, so brought society forward. But as I say, you know, that that is redolent of uh, social justice, which is rooted in uh, moral truth. All right. Let's talk about the speech overall. And, the, and, and, and he used very careful language and very artful language to present his point of view in the most positive way that he possibly could, which makes it a little hard to, you have to unpack it a bit before he can start bringing up the other side. But will he be able to succeed with these plans, to, to change our thoughts about the Constitution, to change our thoughts about what God's design for relationships is all about? I don't think so. The course that he has embarked on is going to engender renewed opposition, just as the course he embarked on in his first term engendered uh, the 2010 elections in which the Republicans took control of the House. I think, Stuart, that <clears throat> these policies will uh, stir opposition for the 2014 midterm elections, particularly some Senate seats that are up. That could well result in Senate uh, gains for Republicans. As we look at, this is all because of the outcome of the last election. And, and I, I think it's a fair thing to say that the Democrats won big and the Republicans, by and large, at the federal level, lost significantly. At the state level, we saw quite a few state houses that changed hands. And there's good news to report there that we'll talk about as we go along. But they lost definitely at the federal level. Have they learned anything as a party, the Republican Party, from that loss? You know, I think they have, based on what I'm reading about uh, Republican trends uh, from Republican commentators. I, th I think th this loss will serve a good, for example, this is what I'm talking about. Mitt Romney was the uh, candidate from corporate America, talked about economic freedom, growing the economy from the top down. The Democrats tend to talk about issues in terms of people from the bottom up. And I have noticed a change in Republican commentary. Now it is uh, all about uh, Marco Rubio's father, who was a bartender. Now that was alluded to during the Republican convention last time, but I think the idea of explaining the value of uh, free enterprise in growing people's opportunity to be successful and, and talking about individual stories. I think we'll see a lot more of that as time goes on. All right. Tom, thank you for your insights and for sharing those thoughts with us. We also appreciate getting your insights and thoughts. You may always write to us at mail at citizenlink.com. We encourage you to pray for our elected officials as this second term of President Obama begins and as the new Congress reconvenes uh, and it convenes and gets things started. Pray for wisdom in the nation's capital. Pray that wisdom will override their political desires and their personal wants and that they will have the wisdom of God as they lead our nation. And remember, stand tall and be heard.